Thank you for joining us at Table Talk with Paul and Libby. With our host, Paula Arnold. Our co-host, Libby Patton. Join us as we conclude our discussion on how to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Well, Libby, we're just going to start off where we left. Okay. Um, but welcome back to Table yeah, Talk. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about, we've been talking about how to love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Yes. And how to love your neighbor as yourself. Right. And I want to go into this a minute. I found this article that I think is really good. It's not about super spiritual. It's just some real good knowledge. Okay. About, you know, I really believe that... Um, People don't love themselves. Right. And so I think, and people say, you have to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Right. But I was reading this. I'm just going to read it. It says, we need to love ourselves. This is what everybody says. We need to love ourselves before we can love anyone else. This may sound wise, but it really misses a great truth. Hmm. If we want to experience true intimacy, we need to be taught to love aspects of ourself again and again by the people around us. Hmm. So just hold on now. Okay. As much as we want to control our destiny, the humbling truth is that sometimes the only way to learn self-love is by being loved precisely in the places where we feel the most unsure and the most tender. Mm-hmm. When that happens, we feel freedom and relief and permission to love in a deeper way. Um, no amount of positive self-talk can, re- you know, do anything for us. I really believe that that's so good, and I believe that I'm always praying that God puts the right people in my uh, life. Because, mm-hmm. you know, everybody thinks I'm just so happy, go lucky. Oh, <laughs> that Paula, she's just so happy. Blah, blah, blah. But if you really do me, I mean, I am happy. I am happy, but I also deal with some issues. And, right. and sometimes I'll go places and I'll come home, and, of course, Lynn is always there for me. And, I, you know, I have some insecurities, and I'll be like, Lenny, did you... Did you hear what they said to me? And that might be something that I'm struggling right. with in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I, I get lots of compliments. Oh, you're so pretty. Or, or you look so good. Or, oh, that's this or that's that. But, you, you know, people don't really know my, my weakness. So she always helps me, Lynn does, to lift that part up. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important um, who you're around because if you're having a problem not loving yourself and i mean don't get me wrong i love myself but i like that mm-hmm. um if you can get around some people that you could really trust mm-hmm. to let go, you able to be revealed that to then those people can lift that up and it's only going to be done by through the love of god right right you know that makes me think of um my marriage mm-hmm. to my husband um, I did not live the most perfect saintly life as a teenager. Oh, really? No, I didn't. Oh my goodness! I know, believe it or not, <laughs> I made a I made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a lot of things that were very shameful, mm-hmm. um, and and things that I'm I'm not proud of. Right. And some of the things that happened to me in my past, I didn't want anybody to know. Right. So finding a husband right. that would love those tender places, those places that brought me a lot of shame, Mm -hmm. those places that I didn't want anybody to know about um, was challenging Mm -hmm. because we know how judgmental people can be, which makes us build a wall around ourselves. Mm -hmm. And very seldom will you let people in, or I would let people in over that wall. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about Scott was he knew my past Mm -hmm. before I ever told him. And I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that he knew. But he chose to date me. Mm -hmm. He chose to love me. Mm -hmm. He chose to talk to God about me. Yes. And God told him that it wasn't a love that he could come up with on his own. Right. But the only way that Scott could love me was letting God love me through him. Yes. So when I went to confess my great sins Mm -hmm. to my husband, because we've been married at this point for almost a year. Right. He said, I already knew all that. Yeah. And I was like, so see, that's blew what I mean. uh, you really need to, I'm always praying that God brings godly people into my life, mm-hmm. you know, so I can lift them up, but also, right. um, you know, lift me up. Sometimes, believe it or not, I have two sisters 
And sometimes I'm intimidated by them a little bit. They're not going to believe this. They're sitting out there looking at me now. <laughs> but, you know, they're so, so smart. I mean, Lisa is just like, I mean, you take the computer and she can do anything. I mean, you take Lynn, and my gosh, she can spell, write, read more than just, you know, it's, they still do shorthand. <laughs> but, you know, neither one of those things are my things. I'm not computer savvy. I'm not even a real good reader. I'm not even a, a good speller. And, you know, when Lisa moved back home and I started hanging around them, I love them. But they don't know this, but I almost began to feel a little insecure Um and I was like, God, well, you know, what do I have? You know, they both graduated from college. They got college degrees. You know, what have I kept? But then God showed me. And Lynn is always telling me, and so is Lisa, you know, my gifts are different gifts. You know, I, I, I like to will and deal. You know, I got a lot of common sense where maybe they don't. You know, I'm really good. <laughs> I'm not laughing now. And they won't be mad because I said that either. Right. I'm not saying they don't have any. I'm just saying I got more, you know, because I don't read as well as they do or computer. But they're always uplifting me because I have a lot of street smarts. I have a lot of, uh, you know, will and deal. I have a lot of financial smarts. So, you know, we should never really compare ourselves mm -mm. because God made every one of us. Right. And he loves every one of us. Right. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a teacher, um, if you're, um, you know, buy and sell heavy equipment like <laughs> I do sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom. Right. You are important, and yes. the gifts are inside of you that God has for you, and you should never be intimidated by anybody else. Right. You know, I, I may not have, sorry, <laughs> I may not have loved the person that I used to be. Right. But God has shown me how much he loves me. Yes. So I'm okay with me now. Well, that's good. I'm okay with me. I, I love, there's certain things about me that God has done on the inside of me that I love about me now, mm -hmm. which makes it so much easier to love yeah. my husband. I have such a love for my husband that goes so much deeper than any natural relationship that I've got here on earth, even with my children. Right. Because Scott knew me. Right. He knew me in my deepest, darkest place, and he still loved me. And that's the way Jesus is. That's the way God is. He knows us in our deepest, darkest places. And he still loves us. He still loves you. Mm -hmm. And and I agree with the article that you read there, and I think it's powerful. But, you know, when we're going into talking about how, how to love God with all your mind, um, before we have to go to a break, I, I want to talk about an intellectual love. Yeah. Because even though they say you can't have positive confession or positive thinking, mm -hmm. the Word of God says that yes, we, we better I, have yes, some positive I, confession. Well, I was going to comment on that. <laughs> I really... Uh, I just meant that we can't, we need That's to not confess. Enough. Yeah. We need to confess daily. Sometimes I just walk through the house and confess, God loves me. God loves me. I'm yes. a child of God. I'm a child of God. But we can't be com repetitive of that and not have anything else. Right. We've got to actually have God in it. Yes. It can't just be words. Right, right. And so in Philippians 4, 8, and we'll go there in the works. I love to go to the Word. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, lovely. whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any, any virtue, virtue and if there be any praise, yes, think on, on these, these things. things. Yes, and I'm all for that. I think that you should always think on your best traits, your best um you're the best about you. I guess, Libby, me and you are so opposite. I mean, we really are. And I don't mean to say this in any way. I've always been the person that um, thought highly of myself. I've always thought highly of myself. I haven't had a problem loving me, and I couldn't imagine anybody else having a problem not loving me. <laughs> but I guess God's changed me a little bit from that because that really isn't good. I mean, you shouldn't think too highly of yourself. You should be humbled. Mm -hmm. And I think God has... Is, is brought me into a little bit more humbling mm -hmm. uh, place because I know with my husband, um, 
when we first met, you know, used to people would say, and I'm just being transparent, I'm just being real. They'd be like, oh, you're so pretty. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I know. And I'd go on and never think anything about it. And then, you know, one time Jeff quit telling me that. And he didn't tell me that for a long time. And I was like, well, Jeff, you know, how do I look? What do you think? Yeah, you look nice, Paula. And I said, well, why don't you ever tell me that I'm pretty or whatever? He goes, because every time I do, you say, oh, yeah, I know. So, see, yeah. um, I, I kind of like what God has done in me. And I still love myself, but I don't think that, I don't think too highly of myself now. Right. Right. So, and I like that. So when, when Jeff says to me, you're really pretty today, Paula, or, oh, you did a great job or whatever. I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm more of a, not a people pleaser, but I'm more wanting to please my husband mm -hmm. to make him happy, mm -hmm. not to do it in a way. Well, I did it and that's the best. And that's just the way it is. I mean, I have a different attitude. Yeah. You see? Yeah. There's a fine line there between uh, people pleasing and pleasing the Lord. Right. Um, I think that. And there's a fine line there too, loving yourself, mm -hmm. but then thinking too highly of yourself. Right, right. God, God says that we are the apple of his eye. Yes. That we are precious in his sight. Yeah. And you know what? We should think highly of ourselves because who we are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Not because of anything, not because of the job we have, not because where we live, not what we look like, or right. the money we make. That has nothing to do with it. Right, right. We it's, love ourselves because God first loved us. Because he first yeah. loved us. Yes. Well, you know, so I was talking to God about this. And, and, and when you say loving God with all your mind, it's your understanding and your imagination. Yes. And then it says, how can we attempt to do this? Well, first, we have to re receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit, into your life. Second, you have to fill your mind with the things of God. Exalt yeah. Jesus. Third, elevate your thoughts to a place of adoration to a loving God, a faithful God. We're going to have to stop there and take a break. Okay. We'll be right back. Jesus is the answer to every problem, every question, every prayer. From a minimum donation of $3, which covers the cost of production, shipping, and handling, you can have one of our new bracelets. Get yours today. Well, we're back, and I'm going to recap on where we yes, left off. Yes, go right ahead. Because this is, how can we attempt, how do, how do we attempt to do these things? Well, first of all, you have to receive Jesus Christ into yes. your heart, the Holy Spirit into your life. You have to fill your mind with the things of God. You have yes. to elevate your thoughts to a place of adoration, to a loving God, to a faithful God. You have to not settle for just a head knowledge of him, but aspire to know him and not only in thought, but from your heart. Yes. You know, like when you had your first love, your first boyfriend, you just desired to be with him yes. all the time. Well, you should have that same desire for God. And you're like, but Libby, I can't just sit around and want to be with God all the time. Well, it doesn't have to be that no. immature desire that, yes. that silly. Your love grows. Your love, it grows. It matures. And, and how you express that desire to want to be with God all the time is to give him praise. Yes. If something goes good in your life, give thanks, God. That was cool. Mm -hmm. You know, acknowledging him throughout the day. Yeah, I want to tell you, I just um, several weeks ago, I, I went through this thing where I just felt like, you know, God, what is wrong with me? I, I you know, I just, I don't know if I feel uh, the same. What is it, Lord? And and so God always speaks to me with words that I don't use in my vocabulary, and that way I know it's him. But he said to me. He said, the devil is priming you. Uh -oh. And, you know, priming means to, you know, you prime up. you ready. Yeah. And so, he, <laughs> and so I said, well, how is he priming me? And he goes, by what you're putting in front of your face. Oh, that's so good. So, you know what? I stopped. And he told me, don't watch this program anymore. I quit watching that program. And then he said, begin to put my word before your eyes again. Mm -hmm. Begin to... Uh, Spend more time with me. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you you have to be having a relationship with God is like having a relationship with your husband. Yes. If I never spend any time with Jeffrey and I don't and I'm not interested in him and I don't talk to him and I don't, it, it's going to fade out. Yes. But you have to 
I like what you said where you read that where you have to spend time with God. You have to spend things time in the things of God. I'm not mm -hmm. saying 24-7, but, you know, I like to do, I, I used to go around like this, and I'm getting back to that, but I was more conscious of God than present. I was you. Right. Then, and that's how we should be, and I love that time in my life, but that does take some work. It does, and, and that's so cool because that's exactly what God showed me as an example. Try to filter what goes into your mind. Yes. It's Ask very yourself important. if what you're watching on television <laughs> is filling your mind with God thoughts or worldly thoughts. Yeah. Be led in what you allow into your mind's eye. Yes, it is. Because, you know, and I'm not saying that you can't watch television. Oh, no. You know, there's yeah. there's some really good shows on. Mm -hmm. There's things that are okay to watch. Right. And there's things that God might need you to watch. Yeah. He's trying to get a message to you, and you might end up preaching it from the pulpit because yes. so and so's addicted to that mm -hmm. show or addicted to that lifestyle mm -hmm. and God needs you to bring it out, you know, yeah. so don't, don't be so um, hard on yourself that you're, you know, flipping through the channel no. saying, that's devil, 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 devil. Oh, there's right. a God I show. Mean, even since God told me that, I mean, I like to be transparent because that's how you learn. So if you're not where you need to be with God, maybe you need to change your life around. Maybe you need to quit watching some things. Maybe you need to quit looking at some things, uh, quit reading some things, quit right. doing some things, and step over and doing the godly. Right. Be about the Father's business. And the cool thing about doing these things, because we want to be doers of the Word, Yes. but these are natural. These are outside things. These are natural things that, that you cannot do by yourself. You have to ask Jesus. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to yes. lead God and direct you into doing these things or getting these things out of your life. Because if you keep trying to do it on your own, out of your own strength, yeah, you won't. you'll fail every mm -hmm. time. It's That's just the way it is. That's... I've just been walking around the house here lately because one time a minister told me, she, um, she goes, you are, um, God needs you in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so I've been saying that, God, you need me. God, you need me. Mm -hmm. And God does need me. He needs you. He needs you. God he needs, needs all, of us. all of us. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be, he wants to be us to be needed by him and he wants to need us. Yes. Yes. And, and we can, we can start fulfilling and start, start feeling yes. fulfilled as we are allowing God to use us yes. and know that he needs us. Not, not to say that. If, you know, if, if we don't do what God tells us to do, that it's just all going to fall apart. No, that's not necessarily true. But we need to understand that everything we do out of obedience to the Lord does have an effect on the people yeah. around us. Well, and you know what? Somebody might say, you mean, Paula, as much as you go to church and as much as, you know, you have this Christian program and you're a minister that, you know, the devil, you was, the devil was priming you. Well, you know what? I don't care to tell it. That's what God said to me. It's going to help someone else, and He may be priming you. But God loved me enough to tell you to tell me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's what I wanted you to know. God loved me enough to tell me. So if you're doing something that you feel that's just quite not right, mm -hmm. and you feel God tugging at your heart, and and you just feel like to hmm. change that channel. Yes, or just stop doing that. Put down that the ice cream. The only reason that he um, is doing it because he loves you. Yes. You know, it's kind of like what I tell Bubba Ray when he's riding his bicycle as fast as he can out my driveway, and I yell at him kind of forceful, Bubba, stop. Don't go in that road. It's not because I'm mad. It's not right. because I'm upset. It's because I love him, and I'm trying to stop him from entering into danger. Right, right, right. Which takes us to the next, the next aspect of loving God with all your soul, your yes. vitality. And the soul is something that's immortal. It, yes. it won't die. No. It goes on to be with God. Yes. I, yeah, it, I believe that because your soul is, is you know. Your, your soul is your mind, mind your, your will, will, and, and your emotions. emotions. And your spirit and your soul is going to heaven. And they're going to connect because when you get up there, you're still going to feel and know and see and do. Yeah, and, and I love how all these are so intricately twined. You can't really, you can't really separate them. They right. all work so beautifully together. And so your soul is your vitality. It's, it's your expression. It's the essence of who you are. Right. And your soul, your, the, your eyes are the windows of your soul. Yes, they <laughs> so are. So people can usually look at your face and mm -hmm. look at your eyes, and they can tell whether you're happy 
Mm-hmm. But if you're a discerner of the spirits, yeah, they can tell whether your soul is going through something. Mm-hmm. They can tell whether you're on drugs sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They can tell mm-hmm. whether you're just hopped up on the Lord. Mm-hmm. They can see through your eyes, through the windows right. of your soul. Mm-hmm. People can look. People who operate in the spirit and have a really close relationship with God can look at your face. Mm-hmm and know that there's yeah. something going on, right. good or bad. Yeah, I want to say that about Lisa on the break. She told me, she goes, <laughs> I need for you to smile and look happier. Well, <laughs> it's not that I'm not happy. It's just I've been through a little a sinus and a respiratory infection, and I'm, I just don't feel as good as I do. But um, I like that she could see, see that and, mm-hmm. you know, said so. I'm really happy, Lisa. <laughs> but I am happy. But um I just want you to know that God loves you. And I want you to know that um, we need to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And um, when you get into that, I just feel that it's just very important. Um, At some point, I feel like we need to um, unify with people and, and, and stop all this bickering and backbiting and mm-hmm. and get to know the true love of God and get to loving people, mm-hmm. uh, not to your hurt or your harm, but to love people with your true heart. Yeah. You know, I've always heard it said that your soul is the battlefield for the enemy. Yes. Because that is where the essence of who you are is. So if the enemy is in your head, in your soul, and I always call it my playground. My soul right. is my playground. Mm-hmm. My soul is where... I'm creative. My soul mm-hmm. is where my gifts will come from because yeah. it's 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 filtered. The soul is your filter. So whatever's in my heart is going to be filtered through my soul. Mm-hmm. So if my heart wants to be creative and do something fun, maybe paint a picture or write a poem or write a song, then it's going to start moving around in my heart. And my heart's going to bubble it up and it's going to come into my playground where I can play around with that thing and enjoy it myself. Mm-hmm. Well, the enemy knows it's in there. Right. So he comes to... Tell me, well, that's stupid. Mm-hmm. Why, why, why are you up here playing today? You know you ain't got time for all that today. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that if you write that, somebody's going to make fun of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the soul is where the enemy will mess you up. Yes, it is. He will lie mm-hmm. to you. He, he will. will. He will tell you things about your brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Say you, you start thinking about sister so-and-so, and mm-hmm. you know that she's been having a hard time. You think your heart says, I need to pray for her. So yeah. you begin to pray for her. And all of a sudden... The enemy comes in and says, well, you know, she doesn't even really care about you. Why are you wasting your time praying for her? Mm -hmm. You know what she said about you last week. You know, you heard it yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then you're over here. You're not even praying anymore. You're in, you're over here in the battlefield, you know, in the soul with the enemy. He's got you off the playground into the battlefield. And you're over here listening to him Mm -hmm. instead of if you're playing with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Right. Doing your teeter-totter and your swing, just praying and, you know, and loving Jesus. So you have to guard your soul. Yes, you do. And that's why when God says to fill your mind, elevate your thoughts yes. to a place that when the enemy comes in, you can say, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm over here yeah. swinging right now. Right. You're under Jesus. my feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to get ready to play hopscotch on your head. That's right. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. and, and take a lot of approach in your soul to mm-hmm. praying and being creative. Um I wrote down here, the soul is the essence of who we are, the center of what we do, and the decisions that we make, our vitality or our immortality. We love God by the choices we make yes. and how we choose to love to live the life, live our lives for Him. I was just getting ready to say, <clears throat> you show God you love Him by the choices that you make. Mm-hmm. When the choices that you make will show if you love God or not. Mm-hmm. I could choose to write a song about death and destruction, and yes. and 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 maybe it would minister to somebody who's way down here in the gutter, and you know. Mm-hmm. But if I choose to write a song about life and love in the in the presence of the Holy Spirit and being in awe of God, then that's my expression. Yes. That is my center. That is the core of my vitality of who I believe God is on the inside of me. Right, it is. And that's an expression of my mm-hmm. love for Him. Yes. You know, so that's what we have to. God has given you gifts and talents. God has given you ways to express your love for him to other people. You may be a, you may be a poet. 
You may be and able to, not even know it. And not even know it. <laughs> you might be a gym teacher and, and God has given you the ability to teach little children and love them and inspire them to go yes. on and do great things. You know, you may be a stay at home mom who's trying to homeschool your kids like I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but God will give you ways to have fun with your children. Yes. And that <clears throat> is that is your essence. That's you expressing God in you. Yes. And I want to tell you something because we only have about two minutes. God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And you might say, well, you know, God knew he was going to raise him up again. But you know what? Jesus loved you so much. Jesus had to go through the pain and the agony mm -hmm. and the torture that we would probably never allow our children to go through. I, I mean, I don't have children, but I can't even imagine saying that I could sacrifice my child for a bunch of people right. that I don't even know. I don't even know how they're going to act. But that God love. loved you so much. That's love. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say to you today that, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And that, what I think that means a lot to me, Libby, is treat your neighbor the way that you want to be treated. Love them the way that you would like to be loved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one way that you can, as far as yourself in your own body, with, you know, you're doing your own will, you know, God's going to have to love through you. He's the right. only one that can do it. But your part can be loving your neighbor. Just think, well, I know they did that, but I still love them. The way God loves them. Yes. I want to end on this word. Um, it's in First uh, Thessalonians. It's in chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and your whole soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. So be confident. Yeah. Know have, that God loves you. Yes, he has called you, he has chosen you, and he loves you. Amen. Amen. God bless.